Well, I'm so glad to be in one of my favorite places on campus today. This is the Garden of Reflection and Remembrance at the chapel. And I'm here today with Sidra and with Denise, who are two amazing fire souls of this place. And that word has meaning for us. So 10 years ago, the 29th of October, we just celebrated the 10th anniversary of this space. And what I love about it is it was partially designed by students that we worked with to design this beautiful place. But it also is this amazing space that is used by community and campus alike. So Denise, tell us a little bit about this Garden of Reflection or Remembrance. Yes, oh, definitely. Yeah, it's one of my favorite spaces on campus too. And I think it really gives students um, a place that they can be apart from the busyness of campus. They can come here, they can reflect, they can walk the labyrinth and um, practice a meditation. Um, they really can just have a wonderful experience. Um, journal writing also is a big part of the labyrinth as well. Oh, I love that. Mm -hmm. Early on, one of the things that we knew is when we created this space, mm -hmm. was right after 9-11, folks were feeling every bit the angst of another period mm -hmm. when we were in the crisis. Mm -hmm. And one of the things they kept saying is we don't have really small, intimate spaces to go and recollect your thoughts and to be at peace because you felt so much of that anxiety. And so we put lots of tools in the garden, blowing water and beautiful plantings. And the labyrinth was one of those spaces, mm -hmm. but also those journals you talked about. Yes. And Denise, we probably fill a journal in a normal school year about every eight weeks, right? Yes, oh my gosh, definitely. And we have three of them now in the, in the garden growing at all times. And people are writing, writing mm -hmm. to each other, writing mm -hmm. to uh, whomever in the world, mm -hmm. including God and lots of other people that get writing. You brought a quote today I did. that you just found in the journal recently. Oh, I did. And it's just such a beautiful one that I think really speaks to the meaning of the, of the journals and of the garden. It's good to know that others come searching for their own internal answers in this external place. The answers do come from inside, but I don't think you can seek them out. Rather, you must be open to them. You must put yourself in places, spacious places, where you feel, let me just continue here, Feel the spacious inside you. In this space, you receive answers eventually, but not when you want them. That's fabulous. What I love about the journals is that we've been collecting for 10 years, and we do research on those journals. We look at what are the themes. Clearly, the time of the year makes a difference. But it's also really meditative, right? To write down what you're thinking, to, to longhand write it out. Um, but something that stimulates all of that, I think, is just the beauty of this place. And Sidra, that's where you come in. Yeah. So tell us about how you play a role here in the garden. Yeah, so I'm the horticulture intern for the garden. Um, I take care of all the spaces. So I always remove stuff from the labyrinth. I do a lot of weeding, um, lots of pruning of the plants, just everything. I have to lead volunteer hours um, at the garden. That's the best. Yeah. All right, so how did you find your way here? Were you a student in horticulture? Yeah, so I, my major is agricultural science and technology. My concentration is environmental horticulture. So I really just came across this internship freshman year. I was lucky to have found um, Meg, who's the volunteer outreach coordinator for the Arboretum. And I got this internship and I've been here, I'm a junior now, so I've been here about two years. Um, and it's really just amazing. I get to see this garden grow over the past two years. It is. It's beautiful. And every season different. Yeah. Right now you're doing some of those volunteer hours where yeah. you're asking people mm -hmm. come and join you in this effort. What can they yeah. do? Yeah. So on Mondays and Fridays this semester, um, my hours are 9.30 to 12. And volunteers, it's drop-in volunteer hours. So students and faculty members can come anytime during that time. Um, and I usually have them do some weeding or some pruning or just general garden upkeep. That's the best. Yeah. And in some ways, people have gone to their gardens in this time of pandemics, right? Mm -hmm. That it's Definitely. a way to be at, at, in tune with nature and maybe a little bit contemplative, but also get your hands dirty a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, Denise, one of the things you do during this time, just like Sidra's doing people in the garden, you do a lot of meditation workshops. We so do. tell us what you're doing there. We do. I mean, um, individuals always are, are able to come to the garden to meditate on their own. But then we do offer throughout the semester, um, sometimes on Fridays, um, and we'll list them on our website, um, different times that you can come and meet us and do a guided meditation. Which is beautiful. Mm -hmm. Because there's something spectacular about walking this almost quarter mile in and out mm -hmm. 
of this path that you cannot get lost, but it's good for both right and left brain. Yes, oh, exactly. You know, I took my first year students that I'm teaching right now to the garden mm -hmm. at the beginning of the semester. And one of the students uh, came back to me and said, you know, Marsha, I go there regularly. She's one of six of my 20 students living on campus. And it's lonely right now in some ways. And she said, I go to the garden regularly because I read the journals because it's like talking to someone, even though you don't have anyone to talk to. Yeah, and so right. I think about come work with you in the garden mm -hmm. or come write in the journal. And it's like talking with people, mm -hmm. being with people exactly. in a way that allows you to be a part of something even bigger. Yeah. I, I want to thank you for making this garden grow, oh. uh, <laughs> but also for tending to the people that come here. Um, one of the benches we have in the front is a reminder of those we've lost and particularly in this time of COVID-19, and even in this time when we are bereft of those who are lost, whose lives were significant to us on campus, grandmas and grandpas, students we've lost, past faculty members. It's a place to remember those we've lost as well. And we've done that here on a number of occasions. Um, Lieutenant Collins, this is where we remember him immediately after his death, veterans, yes. and those lost um, as well. So it's also a place that has sort of a memorial category, yeah. just like the Memorial Chapel next to Oh, definitely. Well, I want to thank you. I hope you folks come here regularly to, to garden with mm -hmm. you, to meditate with you, but also to just be in your own head and heart. Thank you so very much for bringing us to one of my favorite places. Oh, thank you so, so much. great to share it with you, Marcia. Yeah. Everyone enters the labyrinth the same way. You follow the similar circular path. During your labyrinth walk, you put aside your anxieties. You connect with the peace and beauty of the natural world surrounding you. Here at the labyrinth, you slow down. You put your mind at ease. You rest from any worries. You stay in the present moment. Sometimes it's hard to do this. As you feel your mind straying from the present moment, gently bring it back. As you walk the labyrinth, become aware of your senses and of every part of your body. You feel your breathing, slow and even. Breath after breath, in and out. Breath after breath, in and out. As you walk, you take note of your feet touching the ground. You sense your legs moving comfortably, not in any rush. Your arms are relaxed and you extend each of your fingers as you walk. You release any tension in your shoulders and back. There's nothing here right now to worry about. You smell the freshness of the crisp fall air. You recognize that there's a slight breeze mussing your hair. This does not disturb you as you walk in peace, slow step after slow step. You reach the center of the labyrinth. You've made it. Here you rest more for a moment or more, simply taking in and enjoying the bracing air the blue sky, the bushes and trees and leaves encircling you. You feel at peace with the world. When you feel it is time and you decide, you depart from the center of the labyrinth. Slowly you follow the same comfortable path, taking delight in the twists and turns of this path. This path is like life itself, many twists and turns, but you find your way. Without any need to hurry, you reach once again at the mouth of the labyrinth. This is the end of your journey for now, or is it the beginning? You depart from this place of rest, this place of natural beauty, and go about your day refreshed and at peace. I'm so glad you came to the Garden of Reflection and Remembrance with me today. It is truly one of my favorite places, and I hope you'll find your space where you can listen to your own head and heart and take good care of yourself. There are people that care about you on campus, but there are also spaces where you can find your own way. I also want to remind you that on Tuesday of this week, it's time to vote. We all need to do our part. And I hope you'll vote and do it with your head and heart, really believing that you can make a difference just simply by exercising the right to vote. Do it, my friends. We'll see you next week.